Pentecost Sunday, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable, motivated, and proclaimed by you through us. Please and Amen. 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 The prayer hymn that Eulina selected for today uh, was the Spirit of the Living God. And uh, we're familiar with that tune, but I'd like us to just look a little, just look at the verses again. Uh, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Second verse. Spirit of the living God, move among us all. Make us one in heart and mind. Make us one in love, humble, caring, selfless, sharing. Spirit of the living God, fill our lives with love. In preparing for today's message, I was reading several of the commentators, the biblical commentators, and one of them made the interesting point that folk really are more interested in Easter and Christmas than Pentecost. And, you know, media and marketing are more interested in Christmas and Easter. And so what is it about Pentecost that has folk not really that interested in the, in the life and in the momentum and in the uh, in the <coughs> of the church, Pentecost, according to this, in the opinion of this one commentator, ought to be the one that we really should invest more in. <coughs> it is the celebration of the empowerment and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit upon all, upon not only the church, but upon this gift of God for the empowerment of all people. Now, wow. The empowerment of all people? Wow. Uh, I know that there have been many, many instances in my life when I've been tired of being tired. Anybody ever been in that place where you, you I mean, yeah, I mean, you're, you're overwhelmed, you're frustrated, you're uh, disgusted, you're discouraged, and in those instances that happen, infrequently, but they happen regularly, unfortunately, in our lives. Um, in those times, we're acknowledging, I'm sick of being sick. I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of feeling powerless. Ty I, where's my power going to come from? Where and when and how can I claim my refreshing? How can I get back on my feet again? I'm tired of being back. But I mean, we, we look back on those times and we look back on those, or maybe somebody's in that period in their spirit in their minds right now. Uh, they do. They ebb and they come and they go. They, they wax and they wane in our lives. But when we're in it, when we're in it, it feels like it will never end feels like it will never recede or subside. And we're feeling helpless and powerless. I really believe, David believes, I love to qualify, <laughs> because I offer to you the option of choosing to, to consider em embracing it also. I choose to believe that God's will and God's way for us is to be one with God, to be in, to, to embrace and enjoy the complete and total accessibility and availability of God. I mean, all the time. That is what God wants. God wants to be one with us. That God is God's earnest desire. And that anything that alienates and separates us from that wonderful union is, can be called sin, uh, uh, it, uh, it takes on all different kinds of forms. And God has, by the bringing 
and by the manifestations of the Holy Spirit is giving us the tool, the mechanism, the method to, to reenact and to reclaim that connectedness that God has perpetually available to us. And it's not just here in the second chapter of Acts. It's throughout the Bible. It's throughout the Bible, throughout the Old Testament. There are countless scriptures. It, and it begins, you need to mention it a minute ago. Genesis 1.1. Darkness was upon the face of the earth. And that wonderful mythology, that image of chaos and darkness. And the first thing that happens is the spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> it, was, it was the spirit. It's manifestation in Genesis 1. <laughs> the beginning, the very first chapter of the first book of the Bible, of the Bible. I mean, <laughs> it wants us to know that the spirit was there to bring the creative, refreshing, renewing, that unifying presence of God, making our darknesses and our chaoses into creative wonderment and beauty and power, so that whenever you or I are in our parched, dry places, in our dark, despairing places. The scriptures are insistent that we recognize the presence of the Spirit. The nation of Israel needed to know that over and over again as the repeated doormat of other nations, the nation of Israel was constantly experiencing times of oppression, exile, discouragement, but yet God would send the Spirit and through the words of the prophet remind them, I am with you. This current experience of powerlessness that you may be in right now, I'm going to bring you through it. I'm going to bring you out of it. Yeah, I got my snack. <coughs> you didn't catch that, right? I just want to make sure. I'm going to bring you out. Like, let me do it again. Out of it. <laughs> it is so important. The gospel, of, I mean, the, the prophecy of Joel that is quoted in the second chapter of Acts. The prophecy of Joel uh, is proclaiming, and this is part of the, the things that become problematic for us, and maybe why Pentecost Sunday isn't as celebrated, because it's something that it, Pentecost Sunday puts it in our face and makes us have to deal with it. The prophet Joel proclaims, uh, the day is coming and is now when I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters. So, so the ageism is thrown out, the sexism is thrown out, the the ethnic diversity, all the things that would divide people that that we use for our convenience to decide who's in and who's out. Unfortunately, we have a God that says, "I will pour out my flesh on uh, my spirit upon all flesh." That God, it, God, I was really hoping you would do some picking and choosing. You know, why can't the, the folk that you pour your spirit out on be a nice homogeneous group of folk like 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 me? <laughs> why why does it gotta be all this diversity? I with 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 no uh, particularities. But the dad gone in the New Testament. God, the scripture says God is is no respecter of person, shows no partiality. Dad gone it, God. I was really counting on you being partial. <laughs> and particular, but unfortunately, you and I have a God that says, I'm giving my spirit of empowerment and refreshment and renewal and creativity. I'm giving it to everybody because I want to be one and connected with everybody. But, but God... 
That means if you're going to be connected with everybody, that means I got to be connected. Mm -hmm. God, you're a God of love. As a matter of fact, your divine essence is love. That means you are love and you give love and you share love and you manifest love. That, and I'm mean made in your image. I have to be love. Wow, that's work. Oh, join with me. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's gonna be hard. And and the scripture again celebrates the manifestations of the Spirit, not only in the Hebrew Testament, in Genesis 1-1, and in Joel, and in Jeremiah, and in Isaiah, and, and, and in the writings. It, it does it there in the New Testament. When, when in Galatians, uh, chapter 5, it talks about the fruits of the Spirit. I love that. <laughs> I get all excited about <laughs> the fruits of the Spirit. Because there are those that would divide, there are those religions that would pick and choose and divide is unless you speak in tongues I don't know how many of us have heard that kind of language unless you do such and such a thing <coughs> such that we know for a fact that that's the spirit then you don't have the spirit you're not saying you're going, you know that kind of exclusive kind of like those languages but doggone it the apostle Paul catches it right and he says ah but the fruit of the spirit remember a fruit an apple tree can't put, put out oranges right uh -huh. And a pear tree isn't going to do bananas, right? If it is of the Spirit, these fruits will be made manifest. And so if I'm standing here with some fruit, ah, where did the fruit come? It came from the Spirit. Say amen. Say amen. That's good. That's good. And, and so the, the Apostle Paul writes the fruits of the Spirit. I love those. Love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, self-control. Now that one I'm still talking about. <laughs> but I got many of the other ones. Hey! <laughs> I'm working on them all. But the, the goal, the point, my sisters and brothers, is that the Spirit of God that has been present from creation is present now, moving, manifesting, empowering you. Like you even said during your testimony, me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you. So that in your chaotic times, in your dark times, in your times of dryness and parchedness and helplessness and feeling of powerlessness, God, wind, God's ruach. God's presence, God's spirit moves and, and fills. Do I have to do anything special, God? Is there anything? Maybe, maybe I should uh, be more generous and you'll give me your spirit so that I can feel empowered. Maybe I should pray more. Should I be more pious? Are there, is there something that I should do? So, so that I, I can get this empowerment that I need? No, 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 no. There ought to be something I should do to earn it. No. The disciples in that upper room, in the second chapter, as recounted in the second chapter of Acts, says that it was men and women it was a diverse, wonderful, eclectic group of misfits. Hallelujah. I can shout on that all by myself. Just like me. Messed up folk just like me up in there. Saying, I open my heart and my mind to you. Fill me. Renew me. Strengthen. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And then God says, Hi, I'm so glad because I've been wanting to get up in you anyway. 
I've been wanting to love on you, and I've been wanting to be one with you anyway. So hallelujah, I'm coming right on in. Yes. Claim it. Pentecost really ought to be every day. <laughs> it really ought to be, not just every once a, once a year. It, 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 is, it is indeed a celebration of God-given empowerment. That we can choose to receive every day. Every day. And I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Pinch yourself. I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm flesh, yeah. That's me. All, all flesh. Yeah. I'm looking, I got a piece of skin right there. I'm pinch yourself, everybody, everybody, take a minute and pinch yourself. Does that look does that feel like some flesh up there? Okay, all right. So let's be literalist. I will, God says, pour out my flesh. My spirit upon all flesh, and that means it includes you. Would you pray with me? Thank you, God, for making perpetually available to us your infinite empowerment. In those times when we are feeling weak and helpless and powerless and frustrated and tired of being tired, help us to surrender and just say yes. You're already here. You're already here with no expectations, with no expectations. Just let your spirit move. And it's still quiet, powerful, and wondrous ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.